since Bruce has passed away in July, I've received many letters from people in Hong Kong who have not signed their names or who have not uh, given their return addresses on the letters. And also I'm sure there's many other people who wanted to communicate their feelings to me because so many people loved Bruce. Um, I'd like to thank all those people. It, it's been a great help to me to know that I have many friends here, even though I'm not a Chinese, and you have welcomed me into your city and into your hearts. Linda, uh, do you take personal interest in these letters? If you have the chance to reply, would you do that? Yes, I have replied to some of them, and in fact, I will reply to all of the ones that I can. It's just that uh, with all this inquest going on and everything, and I have a lot of things to do, to do while I'm here, it, I may not get the replies done as soon as I should, but I will reply to the ones that I can. Linda Lee, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam and Ribu Hoi have been my very close friends for quite a while, but since um, since Bruce passed away, I they've given me so much help and support and friendship without asking anything back. Uh, I don't think that I could have <coughs> been as strong as I have been or have tried to have been without their support and their friendship. I, I heard from Rebo that uh, your association with them was quite by accident, was it? Was, is that right? You met, how you met? Mm -hmm. Well, they came back to Hong Kong at about the same time we did, and we were all taken to dinner by the Golden Harvest people together. And uh, Becky and I, not being so... Uh, keen on the different kinds of Chinese food. We were, <laughs> we were eating duck's tongue and eel and things like this on that particular night, and we'd be glancing at each other over the table <laughs> and chuckling. And, and I guess uh, maybe because we're both Americans and we come from the same background, it, we struck up a very close friendship. <laughs> Linda, can you uh, tell us, how did you spend your time with Bruce? Um, how long have you been married for a start? Uh, we celebrated our ninth anniversary just last month. <laughs> so we just missed our ninth anniversary. And uh, during your nine years, uh, can you recall your happiest moments? Well, there's so many. It's, uh, it's hard to say when is the very most happy moment. Um, I'd rather not specify one moment. Uh, it's more of a growing happiness as the years went by. I can't say the day we got married is the most happy because as the years went by, uh, happiness became more, love became deeper. Uh, how did you meet Bruce? Um, I had a girlfriend in high school, a Chinese girlfriend, who was taking Kung Fu lessons from Bruce. And we all thought it was very funny. And we laughed at her and kidded her about it and uh, Bruce used to come to my high school I was still in high school and he was in college and he used to give lectures in Chinese philosophy and uh, my girlfriend was quite struck with him <laughs> 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 and she took me along one day to her Kung Fu lesson and I thought it was quite a bit of nonsense <laughs> and then however some time passed and uh, after graduating from high school, I started in at the University of Washington, where Bruce was also going to school. And because my Chinese girlfriend knew him, we sort of uh, became a group that used to meet together in, in the hub between classes. And we would just talk together and just have a lot of fun all together in a group-like. And then, uh, well, the group kind of broke up. <laughs> and Bruce and I sort of just got together. <laughs> And uh, you yourself have uh, taken up uh, Kung Fu? Oh, yes, from that point on. <laughs> from Bruce? Yes, in fact, I, well, actually, I don't know if I was more interested in the Kung Fu or in the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Did it take you long to uh, develop the art? Oh, well, I can't say I ever developed the art to a certain, any degree of proficiency, but um, I've always been very physical, and I was a cheerleader in high school, so I wasn't completely out of shape so I could uh, do the things that, we, that everyone else was doing in class. Um, after we got married, he sort of used me as a sparring partner. Oh. <laughs> you know, uh, gently. <laughs> yeah. 
that he would try new things on me. And uh, I, when the children were coming along and they were young, I didn't continue to practice daily. But um, uh, he made it very clear that a woman is no match for a man when it comes to fighting. Mm. And that, but in another way, a man doesn't usually come up to a woman and put up his fists and say, you know, we're going to have a fight. He will more likely to uh, come up to a woman and grab her from behind or from... In other words, he will be in a very vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. So the best way he taught me with is uh, just to hit the vulnerable spots and scream and run a lot. <laughs> Did you ever reach a stage where you feel that you could be an instructor yourself? No, never, no. <laughs> I, I was under the impression that um, on television here in Hong Kong that uh, you were able to take care of yourself. Well, we uh, sometimes did demonstrations together, but demonstrations are completely different from being proficient in an art. A demonstration is a show. <laughs> I see. <laughs> and it, uh, as far as my part of any demonstration, it's a bunch of tricks. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well, uh, Linda, could you tell us um, after your 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 marriage to Bruce, uh, where where do you normally uh, spend your free time? Uh, I mean, on his spare time. Uh, he was a very uh, private individual. He didn't like to socialize. Didn't like to mix with the nightclub people or go out and party a lot so we spent most of our spare time at home in this room well, which you can in his study mm -hmm. where you can live for days without going out <laughs> supplied with refrigerator television books and he could stay in here for days and days well let, let me describe to the listener exactly what I see here um, two statues of uh, one of Charles Chaplin or Charlie Chaplin and one of Stan Laurel, is that right? Stan Laurel. And, uh... There used to be four. Uh, there used to be, um, W.C. Fields and, uh, what, Laurel and Hardy. Well, you have, we have Laurel, but what happened yeah, to Hardy? Hard, they got broken. <laughs> <laughs> Who by? <laughs> My son. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I see lots of books, uh, lots of books, Linda. Are they mostly uh, on any particular topic? Well, they cover um, all kinds of physical training, all kinds of hand-to-hand -hand combat, in any style, Western, Eastern, any kind, um, philosophy, any kind, uh, worldwide. You know, d he didn't just stick to any one particular kind. Uh, many books on um, improving yourself, knowing more about yourself, such as... Uh, books by Krishnamurti or uh, The Prophet by Cahil Gibran and books like that now uh, moving on let's see two very very comfortable armchairs I presume one is for you one is for Bruce yeah right yeah <laughs> one of them was supposed to be in the bedroom but uh, we decided if one of us is going to be comfortable we might as well both be comfortable so we <laughs> moved both in here because <laughs> we sit in here all the time <laughs> And on to the right, uh, a pickup, a tape cassette deck, and an amplifier, and uh, more books, and more books, and uh, the two speakers spread as would any stereo set, and a picture of Bruce Lee. When was that picture taken, Linda? That was taken, um, um, I guess about a year ago, on the top of Ocean Terminal car part oh yes yes yeah now uh since we were in such a cozy atmosphere can you tell us uh, what sort of music uh, bruce like or let's say both of you like uh bruce likes modern music he didn't especially like classical music although we did have a few um records of classical music that sometimes we did put on but um he likes uh some jazz mostly music with a beat some mostly romantic music, music where the words have a meaning. Um, now, Linda, if we can come to the list of uh, songs that mean uh, an awful lot to Bruce and yourself, I see you have uh, Sergio Mendes and Sinatra, Tom Jones, uh, Samuel Hoy, Engelbert Humperdinck. Can you tell us, first of all, uh, what is the 
the meaning behind My Way by Frank Sinatra. Well, I love that song myself very much, and every time I hear it, every time I've heard it, I always think of Bruce because he always did things his way, and there were many other ways he could have become successful. He could have, for instance, um, opened a chain of kung fu schools in the United States because it's a fad over there now. Mm -hmm. And he was often advised that he should do this, especially after he did the Green Hornet television series. He could become a millionaire doing that. But he didn't feel that he should, that that was the right thing to do because um, to learn um, his type of martial art takes very personal instruction. And he could have... Um, could have grabbed hold of uh, several television series which were offered to him over there but he didn't feel that was the right way to do people were always advising him of he should do this or he should do that he should write a book because he had become so popular in the martial arts world and he could make a mint off of this or that but he stuck to what he thought was the right way for him to achieve his goal he wrote down on a piece of paper in 1969 exactly what his goal is and that was to become a film star bringing out the best qualities of Chinese martial arts and showing it to the world. Well, that's one way of expressing one's uh, way and, uh, and that is the reason behind the song My Way by Frank Sinatra. He liked to watch his Chinese Cantonese movies on TV mainly because uh, he didn't like the, so much the movie as he would be studying the techniques they were using and to see what they did good and what they did bad and so what he could use. Not only Cantonese movies, but any kind of uh, movies. Uh, what about the, the, the uh, fighting movies, the Chinese boxing movies for uh, Wong Fei Hung? Have, yeah. Does he like that? Yeah, he likes to watch it, yeah. He, he could uh, pick out uh, what he shouldn't do because it didn't look very good. <laughs> or what, you know, and, you know, or the other way around, too, what was good, you know. Besides that, he liked to watch those movies because he knows most of the people in those movies. And he often worked with them when he was a child. Coming back to the music, uh, Linda, uh, I see that uh, Bruce likes Sergio Mendes a lot. Any particular reason for that? Because of the beat. Bruce can dance really well. Yeah, he was in fact in 1958. I think he was the Cha Cha King of Cham of Hong Kong. Right. <laughs> yeah, and so he really likes music that you can move by. And he used to put music like this on and and jump around the room and spar and do movements to try to get a flow going. Does he find that the two go together? Or it comes. You have already to your res your response is often before you have uh, been attacked. You have to be that quick. He was, anyway. Mm. Now, what about your, your son, uh, Linda uh, Brandon? I believe he is also quite a, a, a martial artist himself. Well, he's very, very physical. He's very strong. Um, he can do some elementary things like sidekicks, and I, I believe he did that on television. Mm. And But Bruce didn't feel it's uh, the right time for him to go into a detailed study of Chi Kung Do, which is Bruce, what Bruce called his style of fighting, because it takes some discipline of mind as well as body. So he started Brandon in Judo, not because he believes Judo is a good defensive um, way of fighting, but more because it involves bodily contact and because you learn to handle your own body. Mm. And so, uh, would you say that Brandon is um, good enough to look after himself? Uh, it depends. Look after himself from who? I mean, if he gets into a fight, I mean. With, an, with another eight-year-old, I say? Definitely. <laughs> more than able. <laughs> He's proved it on more than one account. He's very um, much like Bruce. Like, if anyone does something wrong, um, for instance, one time... Uh, by my son and my daughter were playing at another child's house and this other boy pushed my daughter down and Brandon took after him and really yes. beat the dickens out of him. <laughs> he, he wouldn't stop. <laughs> He's very defensive of what belongs to him. <laughs> Does he love his little sister a lot? Oh, def oh definitely. He's, of course, they uh, have their arguments mm. and they fight about toys and everything like that, normal. But 
when I'm not around, when nobody's around, he takes very, very good care of her. He, um, in, even now, when they are in Canada together and I'm not there, even though my sister is the one that, um, is acting as the mommy, he is the one that looks after her very, very closely, makes sure everything is right for her. <laughs> are, you, are you going to encourage him to uh, carry on with this uh, kung fu? Oh, yes. Uh huh. I don't know what's... Well, Bruce has one assistant instructor in Seattle that uh, he, who studied with Bruce for quite a few years. So um, he will be able to carry on Brandon's training. For now, um, until Brandon's a little bit older, he can carry on with judo. He's, he's just become a yellow belt, so he can carry on a little more with that. Mm -hmm. But he will be physically active in everything. Bruce and I, besides uh, martial arts, Bruce and I both loved gymnastics. And we'd like to encourage Brandon as well as Shannon to go into that. Now, Linda, uh, Kung Fu is not really the uh, title or the name that uh, Bruce um, described his fighting. Uh, no, he didn't actually call it Kung Fu. He, the actual name he used was Ji Kun Do, but he didn't actually like to have a name or a style branded on his way of fighting because he felt that fighting is something that evolves of itself. It happens as, I mean, you react to something not in a way you've been taught or in a stylized way, but in a way that is, fits the appropriate time. And so he hated to be labeled with a certain style, mm -hmm. but um, the name he used was Chi Kun Do. Uh, what, what does that uh, actually mean? Uh, the actual translation is stopping fist way or intercepting fist way mm. but now he has been branded with uh, the title kung fu well kung fu is really a general term impossible dream by tom jones what does that mean to you uh actually it means i think that uh, nothing is impossible the name of the song happens to be impossible dream but bruce never said anything was impossible. He always tried harder or reached out for the highest. You know, he reached for the star, you know. He, um, he made his dreams come true. He didn't, he didn't wait for an opportunity to come along. He made his own opportunities. Sergio Mendes and uh, Look Around. Bruce believed that each new day should be a day of discovery that yesterday is passed by and tomorrow is not yet here. We should live in the present. And that's why every day should be a new day of creation. And this song, if you listen closely to the words, it explains uh, how you should notice the, the little things that are around you every day that you take for granted, but are really what make up the real world. Now, I believe uh, uh, Samuel Hoy and his wife, Rebu, are uh, very close friends of yours, Linda. Um, any reason for the song, Morning After? Well, I love the song. I love it more because Sam sings it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, um, well, there's three ways of saying why I like the morning after. One is because I believe that Bruce has passed into a, a world of a new morning, a new world, say. Uh, he's left the darkness of this world and gone into a, a, a brighter world. Another is because um, now I have to uh, find my new morning. I have to start again. <laughs>